Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Freestyle TV after such a long summer break. Uh, I'm Pega Pirto, wonderful to be back. And here with me, Daniel Rusebu. Daniel, what's up, man? What's up? How is it going? It appears that you have managed to escape the closet where you usually make these episodes. Yes, yes, people. I know it's it's summer, and um, as you can see, I'm, I'm on my summer holiday. So, yeah, I'm in Greece, enjoying life. I'm actually at the swimming pool right now. So, yeah, I'm just uh, I, I'm having holiday vibes, but I'm still here. And uh, yeah, let's talk freestyle, man. Yes, man. It's definitely time to talk freestyle because uh, since we last caught up. A lot has been happening. Uh, Daniel, which would you like to uh, tackle first? Red Bull Actually, Street style? I have another thing. Okay. Before we start, before we start, I would like to say that, you know, you and me, we run I'm a Freestyler. And I just wanted to say a little sorry for not being so active lately. Because we've been posting for 10, 12 years on this page now. And lately, I've been taking it easy because after posting for so many years every single day, I was like, you know, this summer I'm taking a little bit easy, as you can see, because I'm sitting here. So <laughs> sorry for not posting too often, but we will be back every day yeah. posting from, from the autumn, let's say. Well, I must say a disclaimer that as the I am a football freestyler admin, I am more like uh, the mental support kind of deal <laughs> you know the backup the mental backup but yeah i mean i think that soon is the right time to come back because uh this so yes. far 2022 has been i would say crazy freestyle year if you don't mind i would yes, like man. to talk us open first because um yes. there was some uh weird policies that they had uh, which caused some delays, yes. but yeah. the event, I think, looked pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Yes, like, to be honest, before it started, I didn't really know what to expect. I was like, okay, US Open, who's going to compete? Is it going to be fun? It was back in the USA, so I, I wasn't really sure. But uh, to be honest, I think it looked it looked amazing. I mean, here we see a little highlight clip uh, filmed by uh, Laura Biondo's boyfriend, who was like a video videographer. And yeah. um, I must say, it looked really nice. Yeah. And there was uh, some great Japanese guys competing. And Caitlin was there. Boyka was there. So, and of course, amazing result by my man PWG from Sweden. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it worked out really well. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Nice. Yeah, I, I, I must say, what made it special for me was of course you know yes. the 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 setup and everything uh but something that maybe not many people think about is that it's not so often when you get to see mm -hmm. like the best freestylers from europe america asia competing in the same competition and that's what we had in yes. the us open which you know the level was insane yes and especially you know with with people as uh, PWG Boyka and they they're only there for one for one reason is to take that title home. So I think yeah. the level was really high, and uh, I'm really happy that that he took it because you know he's been he's had some disappointments in his career. You know, second championships at the Asian champ, uh, sorry, second place at the Asian championships, things like this, Super Bowl quarterfinals, etc. So he was always very close. So I'm very happy for him that he actually took the title now. And uh, yeah. same thing goes, of course, to Caitlin. Um, who's always very close at the top, but never really wins any title. So it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to PWG, and uh, we'll be we'll be seeing PWG a uh, whole whole lot more this year, also in another competitions. Um, so Red Bull Street style, Daniel. Yes. Uh, at the moment, the regional qualifiers are on. The fe female. Yes have started competing just now, uh, but I must, I wanted to raise a couple points from the national qualifiers. Yes. Uh, first of all, there was many big names competing that actually didn't make it yes. to the regional qualifiers. Pedrinho, yes. uh, Super Bowl champion from some years ago, yes. competing, couldn't make it. 
uh, Gabriel Parque, uh, one of the finalists from last Red Bull Street Style, uh, knocked out in the rest of the world competition. Jumo, who's won Red Bull Street Style as well, was competing in the yes. Polish qualifier. He's out, and there there are some uh, new names uh, in the game, such as Wiwi, who I actually saw for the first time in last Super Bowl, who is the current Belgium uh, champion. What kind of conclusion you can make out of this, Daniel? Well, let, let's start off with the rest of the world, right? I mean, first of all, I love all these names, but the, the most interesting for me is always the rest of the world competition because I think it's the most unexpected one. I mean, you were talking about Pedrinho. I was like, yeah. didn't Pedrinho stop? I didn't see Pedrinho for like four years. And suddenly Pedrinho shows up, you know, and I see Mohammed from Luxembourg, as you said, yeah. Gabriel Park. And, and and the thing is, some people ask me, sorry, I'm, go, I'm getting a little sidetracked here, but some people ask me, they was like, why is there Brazilians in there? Why do they not have an own competition? It's a bit yeah. of a complicated story, but to make a long story short, Brazil is not allowed to have their own qualifier for some technical reason, whatever, some rule in Brazil. Um, so it's not allowed. So that's why the Brazilians ended up in the rest of the world, yeah. which made it the most interesting competition for me because we have PWG, we have some guy from Cuba. Did you see his yeah. level? Yeah, he was, see, he was I, I think I think he was also competing uh last year i didn't get to see his battles but yes i i noticed that he went uh, he's so good man. He, his, his, he, he was really far in the competition his play style level is almost at the same level as uh amazing yeah but yeah so i'm super excited um i think we have like how many national winners we got almost 50 i would say because we had a yeah. few live tournaments as well we had like belgium we had hungary so we had a brand new winner in Belgium, some guy called William, I think. I didn't yeah, really know a, him, but he was at Super Bowl last year. Well. Yeah, he's Wee Wee. Wee Wee. His freestyle name is Wee Wee. No, not Wee Wee. That, Wee Wee is a different guy. Wee Wee is a different guy. Really? Okay, I yeah, thought it was Wee Wee. Wee Wee. No, no. Wee Wee is the guy from France with the urban ball that's very good at show flow. This yeah. is a new Belgium guy. He also speaks French. But his name is William Rush something, I don't know. But um, yeah, so he won the Belgium qualifier. So that's cool. And yeah, now now we're going to the to regional. So bring it yeah. on. And here we have the actually the battle pools that are, like I said, are go, going on at the moment. So yes. uh, if I zoom in a little, well, like Asia. It, for me, it was outstanding how many competitors, female competitors, like came from Asia. So many from Iran and Japan. Iran. And actually, when you when you look at it, there's like Japanese, uh, Irani, Iranian, and Indian freestylers here. Um, Europe, we have Melody, yes. Agushka, Anastasia. After a long time competing. Oh wait, 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 wait. Okay. Yeah. Melody is back. Didn't she yeah. say she was going to retire? Yeah, I, I, I think she said that. What's happening? Well, I mean, I mean My last she's battle. Still good. <laughs> yeah. um, she can still win, I guess. So. Yeah. Um, well, we don't have time to go through all of these, but, you know, you can find the battle pools on the WFA uh, website, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. So some people um, are wondering where you can find those battles. It's like WFFA, and then you go to events, and then Red Bull Street Style on the website. Yeah. But I think the time has come to jump deep down in freestyle history uh, and talk about Super Bowl. So, for Super Bowl, there's really only one man to really, uh, really tell us what Super Bowl is about. And this person, I'll tell you more in a bit, but this person is, for me personally, 
one of the biggest inspirations and you know with his love i just keep pushing freestyle from day to day and this guy is actually on a video that we have a pleasure to see right now <laughs> This person, ladies and gentlemen, is who else than Lukaso. Lukaso, welcome to Freestyle TV. Thanks. It will be <laughs> better introduction without the video, which is like 15 years old. But... Yeah, yeah, you got it right. No, but it's exactly 15 years old. How, how yeah. old were, were you in that video? Yeah, like 16, 17, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, good times. Well, the, thing, yeah. the thing is, life was different at that time, right? But you know what the thing is that a lot of the people watching don't actually know that you, me, and you are freestylers. Yeah, <laughs> from the beginning, that's the best thing. Like people sometimes ask me at events. I don't know if they do that to you as well, but they go like, "So are are you like uh, are you like also involved?" They ask me like they have no idea. But I don't know if you get that too. Do you get that? Yeah, all the time. Like basically. I think, well, my last competition year was 2013. Yes. And yeah, and uh, after that, I know that uh, in two or three years, you know, even uh, when we did the Super Bowl in Liberec, there were new new guys coming in and they didn't know that uh, I'm a freestyle. They just thought, oh, this is Super Super Bowl guy. You know, he just came yes, from the yes, Edmonds. Yes. And... <laughs> um, but actually, funny. Luca, so how did you start freestyle in the first place because like you've been in the game for so long so how did you actually start freestyle yeah i've been in the game not so as long as daniel here <laughs> that's for sure well barely anyone except steve has been <laughs> yeah. in the game as long as daniel but how did you get involved yeah. well i i uh, i was a I was a footballer. I was a passionate footballer. Uh, I played football since I was eight years old. And then I started to also play professionally for a local team, but only for a one year because, you know, that was quite funny because I worked my ass off for five years to be in a professional game in a football. And when I actually got there and I had a chance to shine, I, di I discovered freestyle. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I stopped paying attention to football and I started to do freestyle and I was, you know, I was going to the trainings one hour earlier, leaving one hour later, just training over there. My coach hated me for that because I was a defender. So I was <laughs> playing with the ball on the, on the position of the last man standing before the goalkeeper. <laughs> and uh, then he just kicked me out after one year. So then I just <laughs> said, yeah, fine, I will be fine. So thanks yes. God for that. <laughs> um, so I started freestyle because of the passion to football and uh, also the internet really helped you now with the first videos of, of uh, actually Steve <laughs> and then Jaga Bonito <laughs> and uh, uh, Tuzani and your guys from Cero, Cero and Cero 2, Pale, Daniel, Nandeman, Abbas, all these legendary names. Cool. Um, there's my man, Magiera. He's my second, second biggest inspiration. Hey, man. Nice. <laughs> Um, anyways, uh, okay, um, so, well, there you kind of named a couple of your inspirations uh, freestyle-wise, but when did you exactly start freestyle? Was it uh, 2005? I was, I was seven, I was 16. I was 16 and I started in 2006. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah I, when, was I was, the, I, when was the first was, time we met, actually? Where was that? I think the first time we met actually uh, like in person was when you came to judge uh, Red Bull Street Style in Prague. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. In 2008, yes, yes, yes. we met in a Red Bull Red Bull headquarters and we were chilling on a, on a terrace overlooking the yes, park. Yes, on the roof. Yeah, I remember, man. Yeah, yeah. 
I was there today. I was there actually negotiating about Super Bowl this year, and uh, I was just uh, because I was walk, uh, walking around and I saw. Yeah, that, I remember the terrace. <laughs> is there is there still someone who still works there from that time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I have like five different people, but they always in touch with me and helping out. So. Nice. Okay. So yeah, I remember. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you remember the good times. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but I remember also we went to, I think we also went to Hansa Weber's house. Wasn't it that time also? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the time. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it was, it was a good time. Uh, you know, not, not that much of Instagram, not, not that much of a Facebook, just videos blasting on a YouTube and a Gorilla and Meta Cafe and all these <laughs> yeah. you know, portal, portals. Forums. And, yeah, forums and beyond football. Yeah, basically, you just did it around the world, and you thought that you invented the world. That's <laughs> that was a good time. I must say, real quick, when I started freestyle, I was filming my first video. I was also uh, sixteen. I had just turned sixteen, and I did hop the world, hop the world, and I thought that was Ahmad. And I, I was telling my mom, I did a world class trick today. Like I'm a freestyler now. <laughs> yes, yes, that's that's a milestone. That's a yeah. milestone. two tricks in <laughs> yeah. a row. You know, that's not messing around with the football. Two tricks in a row. That's freestyle already. Yeah, yeah, that's freestyling. I agree. Yes, yes. Uh, when you can start connecting them. Yeah. yeah. But okay, so now we know a little of your background as freestyler. How did Super Bowl came to be? That's a good yes. question, and uh, <laughs> I'm actually saying this story uh, on uh, almost on every players' meeting on Super Bowl. Uh, basically, I think that the biggest green light for a Super Bowl for something like that to happen, uh, there were two things. One thing was definitely Euro back 2007. Mm. When I got to oh, yes. where we like that, oh wait, that there we met first. That's actually the first time, yeah. But then we didn't talk. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I when I came there uh, in the Euroback and I I could meet all the legends because I remember there was you know, Daniel Rosenblum, Pale, John Farnworth, Tuzani, Shimo, Namdeman, you know all these guys. It was incredible. Oh so, yeah, man. Yeah, when I entered the arena. And I saw all these names, all these names just warming up and chilling. Uh, the feeling I had is something I cannot describe anymore. It just you can't describe it. And I said that I actually want as many people as possible to have the same feeling as I did. And that was the that was the yeah. first first contact of my mind with the idea of creating something where everyone can come, everyone can enjoy. It's not only about competition, it's about just coming together, training, you know, that's why we have night gyms. That's why we don't have a, uh, you know, the no drinking, no smoking policy. It's just a big festival yeah. of uh, having a good time and uh, being freestylers and being basically kids as long as we could. So but that that's was- it, man. That's like, it's more of a festival feeling. I think that's the right word, of expli- the way of explaining it. It is. It is actually becoming festival at the moment because uh, if I if I look at this year, you know, it's it's the week of competitions, of course. But then uh, on Friday we have a conferences. We have a, a multiple workshops for everyone to attend to find out how to organize the event, how to be active on TikTok, how to uh, how to be more connected with freestyle and WFFA. It's uh, we have a freestyle shop. We have uh, the chill chill room. We have we will have a gaming zone. We will have a Hana. We have a tech ball. You know, it's it's gonna be a festival. It's gonna be just just come and enjoy the whole week. Awesome. Yeah. So that, um, that's sorry to just, just jump off the topic. So that was actually how how the freestyle uh, how the Super Bowl was created. Yeah. The and ideal. and like technically, like like technically, how did you do it? Because did you have any experience in events or? How did you find the resources? Like, how did you actually do it? Mm-hmm. Well, technically, 
that uh, that was actually the second thing I wanted to talk about is uh, meeting uh, food beggars and uh, their main man Dexter, who actually introduced me to the world of small events which can make yeah. impact. So that's how Super Bowl started, as you can see on this video. This uh, video from 2009, we were freestyling yes. on a carpet, right? and uh, with two speakers, few benches, some tents, and that was it. Yeah. So that's what Dexter taught me how to do: how to find the resources, how to talk to people, how to. But it was still in a in a really low way, right? Like uh, like punksters. <laughs> this is the white, yeah, white. Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, so every year it was developing and a passion to do uh, to do more was still inside me. And uh, yeah, it's been 13 years now and uh, it's still going. <laughs> so technically yeah. it's a Dexter, Dexter's, uh, I, I want to thank to Dexter to actually introduce me to the, this world. But uh, I have never studied, I've never had any school or event directory or anything. I was just... I was uh, yeah. just excited about doing stuff I like, and that was enough. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 of course know this story very well myself because uh, uh, I've been in Super Bowl since 2012 when it when it was actually called Super Bowl, and I remember because yes. just a year before we had the Footback World Open in Helsinki. So when I go to Super Bowl and I look at the competitions that there are, I just noticed that all the competitions were basically directly copied from footback and just like <laughs> transformed into freestyle freestyle form. And I was like, uh, when, I, when I saw, for example, challenge, I'm like, but the real name is request. Like in footback, they call this comp competition request. <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah. Then, yeah, uh, that's basically right. But, uh, you know, that's... Uh... I really got the inspiration from foodback tournaments, especially in you know, things like Sig3, Big One, uh, Request, as you say, Shred30. Yeah. But uh, I, I got to say that it's mainly the inspiration, because if you look at the rules, they are quite different. And also they are built differently. So it's, it's not yeah. an exact copy. I wouldn't call it exact copy, but I would say it, I, it was inspired by foodback. I cannot deny it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But um, the place of football is way cooler than football. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's better because you can actually see the thing you're doing tricks with. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. It doesn't look like it just... Uh... <laughs> yeah. So we, here we have some some stuff from uh, Super Bowl 2012. The first, yeah. the, the actually first Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, first so tournament we, named Super Bowl. Yeah, so... Yes. How did that like? Because 2008 there was uh, the Freestyle Grand Prix, and then uh, uh, the European Championship in 2009, I think. No, nine was Grand Prix, uh, ten was European, eleven was World. Yeah. So yeah. then 2012, all of a sudden it's Super Bowl. So what's behind the name and what's behind the story? Because the logo has never changed either. And if you want to see the logo, it's right here on my shirt. <laughs> Look at so. When, when did uh, PJ get involved? When was it the first time you met him? Daniel, right now, I'm not sure if Lucas is thinking real hard or is he suffering okay. over a bad connection? <laughs> I don't know. Lucas, are you here? <laughs> I'm not sure either, but uh, when was your first ball, first Super Bowl up again? It was this one, 2012. Was it this one, 2012? Man, that yeah. was an epic one, man. There were so was so many epic moments. That was also when when Rocco was on his best, like Ars was on his best. The Gunther, yeah. Scora, Ethan. Yeah. It was the yeah, lowers like, area, man. That th th that's ex like this was lowers era. And Tom Paul and and yes. And, and it's max it's, i see yeah it's mind-boggling uh, because when i watch these videos i can tell you know that actually 2012 was the first yes. year 
when someone did uh, alternative elbow. It it was undone oh. until 2012, and you know, mm-hmm. or maybe it was 20. 2011, but this was the first time like a lot of people saw it live and captured it on HD cameras and everything. Yes. And uh, I just remember because I had I had been to one meeting in in Sweden before. Yes. But when I went With to me. Super Bowl, yeah, when I went to Super Bowl for the first time, I was like, "What is this? Like, I can't believe yeah. like, the level is like, it's just so yes. ridiculous to see it with your own eyes." Yeah, it was okay. crazy. It, it was there were circles everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yes, all the time. Boots. There was boots. Now, Lucaso, we're just talking about the 2012 area when everything was about lowers, man. <laughs> yeah, that was on, that was not only 2012, but it was I think 2010 when Dome did the first Pale Pale <laughs> until like 2015 yes. until at 2014. the campsite. At the campsite, say better. Yeah, <laughs> 2014, 15, yeah. before Erland came and discovered, <laughs> we discovered the, uh, the transition game. The yeah. yeah. Um, Crazy. But, um, before, before you froze, we were thinking, uh, so how, where did the name Super Bowl and the logo come from? <laughs> and this is actually really simple and really not interesting <laughs> it's uh, it, the the idea came to my head because i was uh, in 2011 there has been a lot of world championships there was super bowl there was kuala lumpur as a f3 world tour there was a oh, yeah. uh, event in uh, abu dhabi and uh, there was just too many big events which were called uh, world championship so I decided that I yes. um, I want to just create one name and one thing, which at the time someone will say it and they immediately will connect the name with the good times in yes. the street. So I was thinking about the new name and uh, some of some of the names were really stupid. I had them written somewhere. You know, there were there were names like uh, emotion in motion and. Uh, you know, big trick <laughs> or something like that, you know, it's just yeah, yeah. not really convenient. But then uh, I think I was, Super Bowl is really catchy. It is, it is. And uh, it actually came yeah. to my head uh, on a toilet when oh, yeah. I was when I was watching the highlight uh, of the Super Bowl in the uh, USA, because I'm not oh, really yeah. interested in, a, in a American football, but I was always interested yeah. in in the halftime shows. And I was yes. looking at the, at the halftime show, and, and I was like, "Super Bowl, that's so stupid. You know, why they call it like that? Why, why they yeah. do, don't call it Super Bowl? Like, you know, ball." And I was like, "Oh, maybe that's it." <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, then yeah, well, I immediately, yeah, and I immediately talked to my uh, to my friend um, uh, David Kravacek, who is uh, since he created the logo, he has been uh, uh, the main guy for Key Visuals. Yes. And uh, he just said, oh, I have a great idea. And he did that logo. And I said, that's it. And within two Love days, Super, Super Bowl was born. Nice, well, man. I don't think that was I think it's a good story, story actually. Is it? That is like marketing 101 right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, OK. Well, Lucas, so next question. Now we have uh, a Super Bowl 2014 playing on the background, some training clips. And I think this is like just when the, the lowers are slowly turning into uh, transitions. You, you still was competing with lowers, but you had to have something else as well. But anyways, I remember 20, 2013, 2014, something like this after Super Bowl. Of course, it was a lot smaller compared to 2019 at the time. But you were saying, uh, let's see if there will be a Super Bowl next year. Because, you know, it's just yes. so much to organize the whole thing. And I'm not sure if I want to do that again. So the question is, were you actually seriously considering of not organizing Super Bowl? <laughs> Well, those were the hard times, 
actually. Uh, that, uh, that's uh, what it was, 2013, when uh, I saw that everything was like everything was growing, you know, and players were uh, there were more players coming, and they were more demanding, and you know there was a lot of yeah. uh, it was a lot of work, and especially with the with the guys, you know, because Dexter has always helped me, and uh, the guys around him had always helped me. And uh, basically, Super Bowl is not generating any income. Uh, well, still. So it was more like a summer, uh, summer preparations and the event for passion. And in 2013, there was a lot of people coming and it was a great event. But then, uh, you know, seeing the feedbacks, uh, how some players reacted to certain things, which uh, I don't remember correctly now what, what really happened. It uh, kind of stopped my passion for a while, and also the uh, not enough resources because uh, Dexter said that he's not able to do it anymore with the guys, and uh, without them, I, I wasn't really that skilled in uh, organizing events yeah. in Prague. So I was really considering not continuing with the Super Bowl because there was uh, simply no way how to proceed. And uh, that, that is why uh, in 2014, the Super Bowl was uh, moved from Prague to Liberec. Because uh, I, I uh, found a new friend and a really good guy, uh, PJ, Pavel Jakubic. Yeah. Yes. And uh, he came to the event and he saw the potential and he said, if we can do it in Liberec, we can get the whole town talking about it and we can just... Uh, you know, we can focus on uh, local sponsors. We can uh, fund uh, some things, and uh, I can help you with the technical production. That's basically what he is doing until now. And uh, he okay. persuaded me to move it to Liberec, and I said, "Well, if that's the toll uh, for Super Bowl keep going, then uh, I am willing to pay it." And uh, for so for three years, we have been in Liberec, and I think that it was really successful even though right. that people complain that uh, there's not too much going on and you know pubs closing at 2 a.m is too early and stuff like that but i still think yeah. that i still think that we had a good time and uh the, the numbers were rising and uh, liberates loved it and it helped with a big comeback in 2017 so I, I think so. But I think also this is the thing that keeps it quite interesting with Super Bowl is that, OK, it's always in Czech Republic. It's always the same competitions, but at least we're changing the venue sometimes, you know, like it's quite nice, I think. So I think the yeah. break from Lidrec to Prague and back is I think it really was necessary. So I think it was a good move, maybe unintentionally, yeah. but I think it kept the people excited because they were like, OK, we're back in Prague. What's happening? Is it going to be bigger? You know, things like that. So oh, this was epic, man. Yeah. Oh. Um, <clears throat> oh man, the reply of Sheldorf here. Oh yeah. man. So oh. yeah, I, I I was just about uh, when you said that the freestylers are demanding. It's <laughs> what the freestylers are demanding today is that we go back to Slavia. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be so sure about it. You know, I think that they no. actually got used to. The, uh Standards. quality quality hotel <laughs> yeah 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 but it, i think it's mainly people who never went to super bowl it's like they, <laughs> yes, want, it, yes. they want it back in slavia so you know they, they can feel the white yeah, maybe like maybe, when maybe they have been but it's like 12 years ago yeah but um yeah super bowl 2016 yeah child of, were... child of against uh tobias bex I remember I was with Daniel on the front row, and yes, we man. were both looking at at, it, at each other like, just like we oh have we would have shown something like completely historical. Yes. We were like joking, you know, in hundred years we can say we were there. <laughs> yeah, man. And, and I think this is ever. also the wildest the crowd has ever been at Super Bowl ever. Yeah, yeah. it was in a in so a main wild. square in Liberec. It was a great yes. setup. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean the, the 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 setup. Like from this video, you can't really tell how outstanding the whole thing was. Like the main square. Yes. Like look at the damn palace on the background, the the streams and yeah. everything. Um, and this actually leads me to 
the next question what is Lucas so kind of your best or favorite uh, Super Bowl memory Whoa. well I have been through them all <laughs> um, I gotta say well it's the most memorable for me at least like I would like to say it's the after parties, but I usually don't remember at all, anything at all. But uh, <laughs> I, Why? I really like, the, <laughs> I really I like the moment. Like not 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 like, but I think that's the most memorable. When you say what is the best one from Super Bowls, you know, is the Gunter Sick Tree in 2011 or 13? Was it? It was 2011. Yeah, it was 11. Was... Yeah. yeah. So, well, I, I know, well, he, he, he behaved like an asshole and uh, that's yes. usually his way. But that thing was, you know, even with the, with the argument with Seán afterwards, you know, that, Incredible. that thing. Yeah, but, but, but the way how he structured the sick tree and actually uh, that was the first time I had a feeling that he actually read the rules. Yes. And, uh, uh, yeah, he structured it so perfectly and then he landed the incredible combo. That I was like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> so th this this whole moment, maybe it uh, sparks a little bit of a negativity, but uh, it was still memorable. Man, and at last year's Super Bowl after party, we took so many pictures of Gunther and Seyan discussing. I don't know if you remember this. But... <laughs> <laughs> they were standing next to each other, and I was guy, and I, and I went up to them with my drunk head, and I was like, "Guys, are we still talking about this?" And they were like, "What? what? They do, they probably don't even remember." But, yeah. <laughs> Daniel, it was Valencia. Oh, they do. They it was do. Valencia, Red Bull Street style after party, and, and they were talking yeah. long. In Valencia, they were right? talking long also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we but, were behind it, like uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> remake. Like, trying to get on their level, but that was like completely impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Daniel, what is your favorite Super Bowl memory? Oh man, actually, the one that you just showed, um, shelled off against uh, Tobias, because as you said, we were front row. I was Kala was with me, you were with me, and everyone was and everyone was crazy. That's one of my favorite ones. Uh, my favorite, one of my favorite ones is also Paula jumping the bushes. And he was he was running, and then Roche and Noble and all that they were like lining up. And Paula was trying to uh, Paula was trying to make some kind of flip over the over the bushes. Uh, that's that's in some kind of video. That, that was a good moment too. So the thing is, for me, if you ask me about my favorite moment, they usually know my favorite. You know, Sorry, it's that... like experiences. Of it's the vibe, it's the night gym, it's, it's the fun, you know, it's, it's like, because Lucaso said, it's a festival, it's true, like, all these memories, and not always on stage, it's just the, the whole community kind of feeling, what I like the best about Super Bowl. Yeah. If that makes sense. Definitely, yeah, 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 I mean, for, for, for me, Super Bowl is usually, like, one week of pure joy, even, like, of course, yeah, uh, now we're in the in the crew and it's a lot of work also but i would be nowhere else in the world rather than super bowl when it's on and and the most for me of course that uh child of against uh, tobias battle is excellent but i think maybe this one is is my favorite battle of all time because i think this was zero drops and and like i was crying like crying all out when when this battle was going yeah. over because everyone everyone stood up uh, i remember it was a full crowd we had a full tribune full of freestylers and they were watching and they were cheering and it was incredible it was a great yeah. great moment as well yeah i mean i feel sad for because there's always someone in the toilet or somewhere else maybe in the in the uh tesco but who who was in super bowl but was, wasn't seeing this is like they missed out really, really bad. Yes. And the funny thing is that Luki almost uh, overslept his battle. He came almost late. Yeah. And I think he was a little bit drunk, maybe, also. <laughs> or hangover. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Um, 
But that's just how he rolls. That's how, how he rolls. That's Lucky. That's Lucky for you. Yeah, and, and he also uh, he's a player who never uh, kind of plans his battles ahead. So he doesn't like have any script when he's he's playing. Yeah, he just yeah. kind of sees what's happening and goes with that. Yeah, that that's that's why he's so dangerous. That that's why when we were talking about. You know, Erland is now like one of the greatest athletes with most of the titles and uh, almost unbeatable. But when we were talking about who is able to uh, defeat Erland, then uh, I, I came out with few names and Luki was among them. You know, uh, ex except uh, Andrew and uh, Pedrinho and maybe in uh, Shimo when he has a good day. But Luki yeah. was among these names as well. Yeah, because he's yeah, so yeah, dangerous yeah. how unpredictable he is. Yeah, well, for sure, and and here is a prime example of uh, Lucas' unpredictability. Like he went super nuts, and and look at this finishing move. Whoop, woo. So there you have it. Um, <clears throat> okay, Lucas. So the the question that a lot of freestylers are surely thinking is, oh no, oh thank God, I thought we lost you again. So. How much money have you made out of Super Bowl? Did you hear me? Hello. Do you hear me? You don't hear anything. Or anything. Hello. Hello. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, I, I think you should be able to hear me. Well, this happened. If you hear me, guys, please let me know in the comments because uh, uh, it could be that I'm just talking to myself, no one's hearing anything, or then, uh, oh, gotcha. do, do you hear me now? Yeah. All good. All right. Perfect. So, yeah, I was going to ask uh, what surely a lot of freestars are thinking. How much money have you made out of Super Bowl? Yeah, well, I, I never wanted to, like, talk about this because I, I know that many people will not believe, believe me. <laughs> and uh, I'm not the one to actually complain about it, but... Uh, I have never made a single penny out of it, and on the other side, I invest my own money into Super Bowl because sometimes the partners are well, the, the budgets are tight always. But uh, with my passion to go uh, even further every year and be better every year, I value that uh, that stream and uh, this innovation and uh, getting more people uh, involved i value that more than my own personal happiness <laughs> i would say <laughs> <laughs> for me money were never never issue like uh, never never I, I didn't need money to you know I, I could sleep outside in the tent and yeah with the ball you know now now it's different now, now i'm older and i'm i feel like grandpa <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i was i was always happy to you know chip in w with when i when i knew that i need this branding and i need this piece of and i need this transportation from the airport you know all these small things and uh, i was i was always happy to just spend my own money on it so it is quite yeah. a lot over the years and uh hopefully it will well not hopefully i i'm pre i'm really sure that it will pay off and uh, all the smiles and happiness of the athletes and uh, the new kids coming and uh, you know all this excitement when the summer starts it's worth every single penny i have so respect uh now that you what now that you? you mentioned uh by the way can you turn down i don't know what maybe you're on phone or laptop but if you turn it down a little then the uh backslash is not so bad but anyways okay. um I was thinking, uh, Joye, you know, from Sweden, Joye. Yeah. 
Yeah, sure. I saw him for the first time in Super Bowl, and he was like such a small kid, and now he is the Swedish champion. He's an adult, yeah. like you know. Uh, how do you feel like seeing kind of people grow up when they come to Super Bowl? You know. Well, that that's that's uh, what I said just here that uh, you know, all this excitement and this uh, commitment and loyalty is just beyond what uh, beyond my wildest dreams you know like if you can see the people who are coming every year and uh, who are growing up and uh, you know it's it's not only yoye of course it is yoye but uh, also oh. yeah hannes Turo, you know if you, if you remember him and uh, yeah, yeah. i know yeah and uh yeah, uh, let's let's say even PWG. PWG is the only freestyle who has been on every single Super Bowl since the very beginning on a 2009. Yeah, he hasn't changed at all. He still looks like a 14 year old Asian woman, but he still uh, he he's he's the goat of Super Bowl for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um. So then, uh, talking about, of course, because the in the center of, of it all is, is the competition. Uh, well, if you had to choose, let's say, five best freestylers of all time who've competed in Super Bowl, who would you pick? Is it competition-wise or performance-wise? Uh, well, because some, sometimes, you know, the, the, whoever wins, some people... Sometimes you don't think that he deserved to win, but you know that yeah, this. Yeah. Well, okay. Time. Let's say let's say performance wise, so it makes it more interesting. Yeah, I, I think well at the, at the moment there is no way you can. Oh no way! That's so harsh to say, but I think Ireland is on the top at the moment. That's yeah. for sure, and everyone sees it. And uh, whoever denies it is idiot. <laughs> I would say. <laughs> but then, of course, we have uh, Andrew Henderson. Uh, he's just there, you know. These two guys, they are my top top two picks. Obviously, Mikritz. Yeah. From Poland. Like the, these, these are definitely top three. Yeah. Okay. And uh, then, if I if I if I go further, I would say uh, definitely Tobias from Norway. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, like from back in, back in the days, I even think that well, it's it's a mix of, of, of people, you know. I, I know I know that uh, Luki should be there somehow, but yeah. also from the new generation, even Yo from Japan. Yeah. yeah. And uh, also I, I don't know why, but I really love Nikolai. Yeah. From Poland. yeah. I, I think that he's one of the best freestyles in the world. But when he enters the stage, there's something he always... He, I, don't, I don't know if it is nervous, uh, if he's nervous, but he yeah. drops a lot. And he's he doesn't show his full potential. And if, uh, if he has a good day and he is able to uh, show his full potential, there's not even Erland who can beat him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I totally get, but I think maybe in Mikolai's the case is that uh, the tricks that he does are such big risk tricks, you know. Yeah. Like I know this, know this myself because uh, I've trained similar type of tricks, and you know the the risk of failing them is bigger than in doing regular lower moves. But definitely, Mikolai is one of the most most creative and most dangerous one on, on a good day. Um, so we're getting close to the end, Lucas, here. But mm -hmm. uh, like you said, you always want to develop a Super Bowl, and right now we have uh, everything well on its way for Super Bowl 2022 to start. But what are the, what are the things that you would dream of that you could have in Super Bowl? What what developments would you kind of put in to the Super Bowl? Hmm. Well, my my main uh, goal with the Super Bowl at the moment is to create a team of people who would be sustainable and who would be able to deliver the Super Bowl even without me being there. 
that is don't, that don't is say uh, that. <laughs> nah, I'm not saying that I'm going away or something, but you never know. Right? Like I can have a heart attack while swimming over in the North Sea or something. But uh, the team, because it is the most important thing in every event, yeah. the team around you. If, you. if you have people you can trust and you have uh, people with the same passion like you do, then uh, you're sorted. And yeah. everything, everything is pleasure. So that's my number one goal is to create a team who would be able to deliver Super Bowl in the same passion and same style as I would love to. Yeah. And it's really hard. It's a hard process because uh, at, the, at the moment, I think we have a really strong team and I would like to keep at least like 90% of it the same for forever. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it, it it has been a long way, you know. I started with Dexter and the crew, and then I went through different people, and they were they were changing. But now we have a strong crew, and we are do also doing Red Bull Street Style together. We are jumping on different events together, and uh, for me, I think it's really important that it, these people are also my friends and not only the co-workers. Yeah, and with that on mind, is is like the best thing you can have. And I think that's the, the, you know, a lot of people are asking, what is the purpose of life? What do, what, I, what I do with my life and whatever. I think that the main purpose of your life is to do what you love without, uh, like without doubt. Yeah. If you do what you do, which, which, what you love and you can make a living out of it and you don't have to focus on something else, then you're sorted and your life is perfect. Yeah. And that's what I'm having at the, at the moment. Wow, respect, man. Uh, you know, Lucas, so I, I have no more questions in my uh, uh, question roulette, but I just wanted to tell one last little story for the viewers from Visok and Israel. Remember? <laughs> yeah, the food back, so, food back frisbee and freestyle football uh, camp. Yeah, summer camp. No. Uh, it was great times, man. So, what was it? Twenty fourteen or twenty fifteen? Oh, I think it was fourteen. Yeah. Yeah, maybe twenty fourteen. So we went there, and twenty fourteen. So I that meant that I've had only seen you Super Bowl twenty twelve, twenty thirteen, and twenty twenty fourteen, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's after. Yeah. yeah, and I think I came, I, I was part of the Super Bowl crew maybe for the first time 2014. I remember like, I remember forever when you asked me to do the Twitter for Super Bowl. And I was like, man, <laughs> like, wow, I made, now I made it. Like, I'm part of Super Bowl crew. Like, it was unbelievable. And I remember even better, it was my birth, birthday. When you sent me a message, hey Pega, could you be the judge in next Super Bowl? And it, it's because my birthday is in October, so it was like only a couple of months after the previous Super Bowl. And I get this message: Can you be a judge in Super Bowl? I was like, I was almost in tears. I was like, <laughs> God damn, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. Full, full, full expenses covered. Like I made it, man. I'm part of the judges <laughs> now. But. Uh, those no. are side stories only. Now, now when so, you talk about uh, when you talk about tears in your eyes, yeah. I remember you actually had tears in your eyes live on stage in two <laughs> in 2019 yeah. when we were finishing, yes. and yeah. I, I called you up and I, I I told your your quote, "That's what's <laughs> up." Yeah, and you just came to the stage and you were crying. Yeah, yeah, that 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 was actually the most beautiful moment of all the moments in Super Bowl, and also when early early when Finland won its first medal in Super Bowl, that was like unbelievable. Right. Yeah. But anyways, enough about me. So 2014 in Vysokin and Yzero, that's when I you know that's when I realized that you know you are actually the boss because you really live and breathe freestyle because we went to bed at one night 
there was me, you, and Kari. We were in a, in the same room, and you were watching freestyle videos on your laptop in bed, like you know everyone watches like TV shows or something like that. You was watching Rocco videos, and I was thinking, man, no one on this planet is just not able to love freestyle as much as this man. <laughs> maybe you're right. Maybe that, maybe that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm sure I keep of it, what man. I'm doing. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure of it. Um, anyways, Lucas, thank you so much for sharing the Super Bowl stories on, on Freestyle TV. Thank you for all the viewers who have been watching Super Bowl. Uh, do you want to maybe say something for the people who are watching this live now or maybe on replay, something about registrating on Super Bowl? Like something perhaps do it before yeah. the deadline? <laughs> That's for sure I can. Well, you know, it's it's been the same for so long that I am still wondering why is it that difficult to understand that. But I, I, I know that there are still new people coming in, a new generation discovering uh, what Super Bowl is about. But uh, we are actually now 10 days until the end of uh, registrations. So make sure that you check out the Super Bowl uh, website where all the information is and uh, where the registration is and Everything is so easy, you know. Back in the days, we were collecting money by bank wires and uh, yeah. trying to figure out PayPal and whatever. And now we have this amazing software called Game Day, and you can pay by card through there. So everything is easier when you arrive to Prague. Everything is ready for you. No hustle, nothing. No, no yeah. cash. No handling cash like uh, Stone Age. It's the Stone Age. <laughs> yeah. So. We have 10 days to go. Uh, make sure I will see you. And uh, just uh, to finish up my performance here, I just want to thank to you, Pege, uh, and Daniel Rosiboom, and uh, the whole team behind the WFFA. Uh, it's a tough job. I know that as a, one of the few. And I appreciate every second you put into freestyle and uh, our work, and especially Super Bowl, because it is not only my baby, it's our baby. So let's make it happen until we breathe. That's always what I say. I, I'm in, man. I'm in. Great. Thank you, Lucas. <laughs> Thank you, WFA. Thank you, all the people. This was Freestyle TV. And like I said, we'll be, in, we'll be back in a couple of weeks at Super Bowl. Beautiful. I will see you there. See ya. Okay.